Late Night has really gone downhill since Jay Leno left. Stephen Colbert has a lot to say if uh, about the potential 2024 presidential race. Because right now, Donald Trump not doing very, very well. Right now, Ron DeSantis doing much better. But Stephen Colbert, he's already looking ahead to what happens if DeSantis takes over Trump. New Wall Street Journal poll says that in a hypothetical GOP primary matchup, DeSantis beats the former president 52% to 38%. Yay? (laughs) Also, maybe boo? It's hard to know who to root for here. It's like a poll between gonorrhea and a slightly more racist gonorrhea. (laughs) This is apologies to gonorrhea. (laughs) Tee hee hee hee. Gosh, Donald Trump, Donald Trump is Hitler. Donald Trump is the worst person to ever hold the presidency. He, it's not just that we hate all the Republicans and conservatives. Donald Trump is uniquely a threat. He's a fascist. He's a Nazi. We have to stop Donald Trump. But Ron DeSantis is just as bad. And I told you this. You know, I hate to say I told you so. I said this all the way back in 2016. They're all pretending that Trump is the unique case. By the time Trump leaves office, it's going to be the good old days. Oh, Donald Trump was bad, but he wasn't as bad as, insert the name of the next Republican, just like they did to George W. Bush. When George Bush was president, he was Hitler. Now he's, oh, the good old days, George W. Bush. Just the same thing with George H.W. Bush. They did the same thing to Ronald Reagan. They called him a white supremacist and a Nazi and a skinhead and all the rest of it. I guess he couldn't be a skinhead because he had such a beautiful head of hair. And so right now, Actually, the only silver lining for Donald Trump in what's been generally a pretty bad political news cycle for him vis-a-vis the Republican primary and Ron DeSantis is they haven't really opened fire on DeSantis yet. So DeSantis is doing very, very well in the polls. But the moment that they start to turn their firepower on Ron DeSantis, you are going to see those numbers come down. I'm not saying it's going to be fair. It's really never fair when the media do that. That is the game that they play. Speaking of rolling with the punches, a House Republican representative, Carlos Jimenez, is urging Elon Musk to move Twitter to Florida. Not to move the Twitter digital platform, he's doing lots of moves there, but to move the physical headquarters to Florida. I think this would be a great, great move. What Jimenez says is, quote, I'm writing to you as the former mayor of Miami-Dade County, who now has the distinct honor of representing my community in Congress. We want to encourage you to explore our free state of Florida and uh, make the move to relocate Twitter to Miami-Dade County. This would solve a lot of Musk's problems. If he moved the headquarters from San Francisco to Miami or something, that would solve a lot of Musk's problems. You remember right now Musk is being investigated because he he brought some mattresses to the office for overworked employees who want to take a quick nap while he's being investigated for that. The government in San Francisco, in California, obviously very, very hostile to Musk. They're going to continue to launch investigations. They're going to pass laws to punish him. And so what he should do is move to Florida. It is a lesson that I've been trying to drive home for a while, but now we're seeing it play out in real time. Politics is not just your friends online. Politics is not just about your affinity groups and uh, some some meetup chat or something like that. Politics is about a political community. Man is, a in, in some degree, a physical being. And so the political community is also where we live. If Elon Musk moves from California to Florida, he will have a much easier time conducting business. Just like the Daily Wire has had a much easier time conducting business when we move from L.A., to Tennessee, just like all sorts of businesses have had a much easier time since they moved from Florida to, from California to Florida, from California to Texas, from California to Tennessee. Elon, now is the time to do it. It's going to be a lot easier to move because you fired (laughs) or allowed to quit huge numbers of the staff. You're selling off a lot of the merch. Elon is probably several steps ahead of us in planning this out already, but let's do it. It would also seriously help the culture war because we have to show these people, that there are consequences to their terrible policies and their terrible government. Take their money away. Take their power centers away. I don't like the idea 
that three or four entities control the public square, especially because they're semi-private entities. But I would feel a hell of a lot better if not all of those entities were based in Silicon Valley surrounded by crazy libs. I would feel a lot better if at least one of those entities, even if it's the smallest one, were based in a conservative state. Speaking of the GOP, there's a big explosive report. This report is out from Red State. It says that the RNC has been spending tons of money and it, it's a, largely a political attack on Ronna McDaniel, who is the current chairman of the Republican National Committee. I assume this is part of the campaign right now. There's a power struggle. Who's going to be the next GOP chairman? Is Ronna McDaniel going to continue to serve? Is Harmeet Dillon, who's a friend of ours, uh, a California Republican lawyer, is she going to become the new head of it? There was a rumor that Mer- Mercedes Schlapp, who's a former Trump official, who's married to Matt Schlapp, head of the American Conservative Union, that she might run. What is it? Regardless of who's behind it, it's obviously an attack on Ronna McDaniel. And I have to say, there are many reasons to attack the RNC and the House GOP leadership and the Senate GOP leadership. This one seems a little bit weak to me. If you look at the money that was spent on private jets, the money that was spent on limousines, luxury retreats, Broadway shows, you know, it all sounds really bad in the headline. It's not a ton of money. The money that was spent on private jets, half a million dollars. That's what, 10 flights, 10 to 15 flights. That's really not a ton of money over this period of time, over a year for a major American political party to spend on chartered flights. Because sometimes to get to fundraisers, to get to big events, to get there on time to places where they don't have commercial flights, I don't know, that just doesn't seem crazy to me. The the, uh, floral arrangements, food and beverage, alcohol. Again, it sounds really bad. They spent $36,500 on alcohol. Well, yeah, they're throwing events. They're raising money. I, this, this seems a little bit weak to me. I mean, all, all is fair in love and war in politics, but the reasons to go after the RNC or the, the failure of the RNC to support good candidates, to win elections, to counter the Democrats' strategies in terms of ballot harvesting, in terms of changing the laws in certain states to, to benefit one party over the other. That's, that's why one would go after them. But spending a little bit of money on booze at fundraisers, I don't know, that, that doesn't do a whole lot for me. The rest of the show continues now. I have got a great written mailbag question from a retired Jewish Christmas tree salesman that I'm very excited to answer. I just see that name right up there at the top. Uh, so you'll have to head over to the members block to hear that question and answer. It's also Fake Headline Friday. So Fake Headline Friday is, of course, where Mr. Davies gives me five headlines. And I need your help to understand which one is the fake headline. We will be uh, doing that right now. Please come over and help me. If you're not a member, click the link in the description and join us. 